In this video, you will learn how to use set notation to write expressions representing infinite sets, or sets of numbers with an infinite number of elements. This is an important skill that you will find useful in all areas of math, including the study of relations, trigonometry, and number theory. Let's take a look at the first example. Write an expression to represent all positive numbers. Now, if we were actually going to do this, it would be an impossible task because there's an infinite number of odd numbers. So we start with 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and then we kind of give up because we realize, man, I'm going to be here for a long time. So these are the first five odd numbers. What we can do is look at the five numbers here and come up with a pattern that will help us generate an expression to represent all of the positive odd numbers. Okay, so the pattern I think is quite easy to detect. To go from 1 to 3, I'm adding 2, and to go from 3 to 5, I do the same thing, add 2 add 2, add 2, and I just keep adding 2 to get to subsequent odd numbers. So I'm going to leverage that pattern and write an expression that's going to kind of look like what you've seen before when you've been working with domain and range. Okay, but instead of x or y, I'm going to go with n. n is going to represent uh, the set of all odd numbers. Okay, n is such that n equals 1. Okay, I'm going to write down my lowest odd number. And then I'm going to add whatever it takes to get to the next one, right? Which in this case is 2. But I can't leave it like that because what it says right now is n equals 3. So, well, there's way more than just that one number as an odd number, right? So what I really mean to say is start with 1 and then add multiples of 2. So to write multiples of 2, I'll go 2x, right? Where x can, can change or vary, okay? But it, it can't be any number. x has to be a certain kind of number. x has to be, in fact a whole number. Okay, Remember, whole numbers are all the positive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as well as 0. So if I sub in 0 here for x, I get 1 plus 2 times 0, which is 1. Then the next whole number would be 1 plus 2 times 1, which is 1 plus 2, or 3. And then I sub in 2, I'll get 5. I sub in 3, I'll get 7, etc. Okay, I'm going to finish off this set with a curly brace, and there it is. That's the expression to generate all odd numbers. Let's take a look at the next example here. And in this one, it relates to uh, trigonometry. Write an expression to represent all angles coterminal to A, 109 degrees. Well, 109 degrees, if you can imagine where that terminal arm is in quadrant 2, if I were to add 360 degrees to this, I would get 469 degrees. And if I were to add another 360 degrees to this, I would get 829 degrees. So, so far, I've got two angles that are coterminal to 109. Okay, but why leave the negative rotation angles out? If I rotate the terminal arm at 109 degrees clockwise one full revolution, I'll get to another coterminal angle, except this time it will be negative 251 degrees. So I'm generating all of these angles by either adding or subtracting a multiple of 360. Okay, so then I can write theta c. Okay, so theta reminds me that I'm working with an angle. C is, let's say, coterminal angles is equal to, let's start with our original angle, 109 degrees, although really I could start with any of these angles. right? So you can start with any of these angles and generate all of its coterminal angles. I'll start with 109 degrees, plus, now how would you write multiples of 360 degrees? Okay, well it's just like in our previous example where multiples of 2 would be 2x, multiples of 360 I guess would be 360x. Okay, but often you'll see the, the letter n being used, right? I used n in another, uh, in another way in the previous example, but here I'll use uh, n to designate multiples of 360 degrees. Okay, now I should say, and I should tell people what n stands for, n this time is not a whole number, because if I restrict myself uh, to whole numbers, then I will not be able to generate the negative coterminal angles. Okay, if I allow myself to um, expand my domain for n to be to include all of the integers, then I'll be able to get all of the positive and negative rotation angles that are coterminal to 109 degrees. Okay, uh, part b, 15 pi over 4. Now, in the previous case, I wrote down some coterminal angles, but that's actually not even necessary. You know that you can generate coterminal angles by adding full revolutions, or I guess subtracting full revolutions. So, in the case of 15 pi over 4, we're measuring in radians, so I have to add or subtract multiples of 2 pi. Now I can write this as 2 pi n, but um, often you'll see it written as 2 
n pi. They just squeeze that n in between, but this still means multiples of 2 pi. Okay, so I'm going to write theta c, in this case is equal to 15 pi over 4, plus multiples of 2 pi, where n is an integer, so that I can get not only positive coterminal angles to 15 pi over 4, but also the negative ones. Notice in this example, unlike the previous one, I didn't use set notation, and that's perfectly fine. You still see elements of set notation here, okay? But you don't have to write it with set notation. Okay, um, then in our final example here, we're going to look at how to um, identify all of the x-intercepts of y equals sine x. Now, what you see here is you, you might think that you only see sort of a, a graph that has a beginning and an end, okay? And so some students, what they'll do is they'll just list the x-intercepts, right? Why not if there's a finite number of them? So they'll go 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, done. Okay, but you need to keep in mind that y equals sine x uh, has a domain that extends from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so really there should be arrowheads on either end of this. Okay, so what we're seeing here in the pink is just a partial graph of y equals sine x. Okay, once you understand that, then you understand that you actually have to list a, um, an infinite number of x-intercepts. Okay, so really this is the same situation as what we found ourselves in uh, in the last two examples. So the x-intercepts would be equal to 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, etc. And it's also etc. on the other end, right? Because the graph continues to the left, and so it'll hit the x-axis uh, in a sort of predictable manner as you go to the left. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just write x is equal to, I can start with one of them. I choose to start with the smallest one usually, so 0. Smallest positive one, this, or I guess smallest one, period, that's not negative. And then I'm going to add whatever it takes to go from 0 to pi, which is pi. And then from pi to 2 pi, add another pi. Add another pi to get to 3 pi, etc., etc. So I'm going to add multiples of pi, which is written as n pi where n is an integer. An integer allows me to go to the right and find and pick up uh, positive x-intercepts, and it also lets me go to the left and pick up negative x-intercepts. Okay, But of course, I'm just going to simplify this to be x equals n pi. No, no need for the redundancy of 0 plus. And so here is my final answer. Okay, And that's how you use an expression to represent infinite sets.